Lope silent appointments and a warning for the president. And the AFDB Ethics Committee claims the U.S. call for a fresh probe is to destabilize the bank. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. The call by the United States government for a fresh and in-depth investigation into the allegations against the president of the African Development Bank, Akiumi Adesina, after it was cleared of all allegations of impropriety and fraud by the Ethics Committee recently is seen as a plan to destabilize the bank. On May 5, the Ethics Committee of the Continental Bank, headed by Takuji Yano, said in his report that AFDB chief was not guilty on all counts. Mr. Yano is a Japanese executive director charged with the responsibility of investigating all allegations by some concerned employees against the officials. And joining me to discuss this tonight is Dele Farutimi, a legal practitioner, Mr. Gbolo a political analyst, and Ihe Chuku Ibeji, a communication expert. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining on the show tonight. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm going Thank to throw right, yes. across, across to the whole three of you with your various reaction. And let me start with Mr. Fautimi. Are you satisfied that um, the matter concerning Akiwumi Adesina has been transparent and above board? <clears throat> it's as transparent as can be under the, in the circumstances. Let me say this clearly. What ails Akinwumi is not what is chasing the average Nigerian on the street of Lagos today. But all of a sudden, all of us appear to have found our nationalistic fervor in coming and queuing behind Mr. Adeshino. What has happened within the AFDB itself is known to the people who have been tasked with the job of auditing that place. And they've done their job. The Americans and the French might not be particularly happy with what has been done. Maybe it wasn't done to their satisfaction. Um, the world seems to have different standards these days. One standard for the Americans, another for the entire world. And the way it's going, it's just, it doesn't even make sense anymore. If the internal mechanism of the bank has come up with a position that exonerates the man, it's I don't understand how the Americans appear to have suddenly found some anti-corruption fervor in Africa that appears to make them to be crying even more than the bereaved themselves. Practically every African that has that occasion to speak on the matter have said that they are satisfied with what has been done by the audit committee of the bank. What other proves the Americans have continued to call for, I don't know. But at least for once, we Nigerians appear to be united, and not just Nigerians, actually. Africans appear to be united for once behind the idea of holding ourselves accountable, yes, but not having the standards dictated to us by people who do not themselves appear to have any respect for the same standards that they are advocating. Now, Mr. Bolo, I, I don't understand that. Right, Mr. Bolo, I need your reaction to that quickly. My reaction? Yes, please. <laughs> uh, let me start by saying that I'm not particularly a fan of Akinomi Ambode. Okay. Uh, sorry. Additional. Akinomi, additional. additional, yeah. <laughs> sorry, that was a slip. Yeah. That was a fraudulent slip. I'm not particularly a fan of Akinomi Additional. And the reason is this. When it was the when he was the celebrated minister for agriculture in Nigeria, he had a program. And like you know, I have an interest in a farmstead, uh, a commercial farmstead. And he was insisting in the public, and he was going everywhere in the public, telling the world that he had created a mechanism through which farmers could engage directly with the Ministry of Agriculture to bypass the 
enormous, uh, enormous infrastructure of corruption that was in place in getting access to, uh, to uh, fertilizers. I tried my best possible, sending as many as possible test messages to the phone number that was being advertised then that farmers should send uh, test messages to so that somebody from the Ministry of Agriculture could get in touch with you. From then on, I concluded that that guy was all style, no, no substance. You know, fantastic public relations person for any position. Style-wise, I score him A++. The substance, when I had the opportunity of wanting to engage with one of his policies or his programs, I was utterly disappointed. But I haven't said that. We are in a situation now where allegations were made. And when the allegations were made, an ethics committee made up of a British citizen, a Japanese, the representative of British interest in that bank, the representative of the Japanese interest in that bank, and you want me to shock you, you want me to shock you, uh, 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 Benny? Yes, please. The representative of American interest in that bank. So you had, you had a Japanese, an American, and a Brit looked into the allegations and they gave him a complete a total exoneration on all grounds of, of allegations made against him. Then you have the American uh, Treasury Secretary, who is like the finance minister of America, come all over to write a letter of protestation against the ruling of the ethics committee when it was about being adopted by the board of management by the board of management of the bank and ironically you don't have big big non-african countries like canada like britain like japan supporting the american position america went and got some Scandinavian, some Scandinavian uh, countries, Sweden, Norway, to back its position. They have a claim, though, that they are not condemning Akimumi Adeshino. They are only saying that they were not satisfied with the first investigation into the allegations. All that all they want now is that an independent outside investigator be contracted to look into the allegations. It's just ironic that this American fudgy dodgy protestation, as earlier mentioned by uh, the first uh, uh, one of my colleagues, the first speaker. This fudgy, dodgy American protestation is inconsistent with the new tradition that we see under the administration where Mnuchin, Steve Mnuchin is serving because the administration in which he's serving is replete with nepotism, indeed from the president who appointed him, his children are playing around, you know, is replete with nepotism and corruption. I am sitting here thinking there is more to it than meets the eye. Could it be, could it be the utter disgust and distaste of the incumbent American administration for multilateralism and look, you know, like they've done with the with the uh uh, with the, like they've done in World Health Organization, like they've done with the Paris, uh, Paris Agreement, maybe they want to be out too of, of 
the African Development Bank because they are just one, America is just one of the 27 non-African countries that are members, but all the non-African countries are countries from the Western Hemisphere. I wonder what is the strategy of this American government because they are making themselves vulnerable to being to having a major African continental institution be susceptible again to being captured by the Chinese. This this style, this stance by the Americans is not only foolish, it is self, it is self-defeating. Oh, uh, Ehechuku, you want to resp I need your reaction also on that, Ehechuku. Okay, so um, real quick, there are so many intrigues um, surrounding this particular um, this this particular issue. So many intrudes. Um the, 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 the whistleblowers did not just focus on only one area in terms of contract. They also focused on um, alleged Nigerization of the AFD, AFDB. Um, now, um, in stark contrast to um, the, so, the, the performance of uh, Mr. Adeshino so far, which has kept the uh, AFDB and the triple, triple um, finance rating, it has more than doubled its uh, shareholders' um, funding. Uh, it has assisted quite a gamut of um, African countries in terms of its uh, strategic uh, trusts and objectives of, 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 of course, a cross-board uh, development and growth. Now, when you bring that down, right down to the allegations from the faceless uh, uh, so-called so whistleblowers, um, the, 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 the drip of that particular, the intention of that, of, of, of this, of this, uh, of their inquiries, of their, of their accusations, really is deep. It shows a, a wide range of issues that have to do with governance in-house, so to speak. But we need to take it down to the real issue at hand, the real context. What has been done? Has due process been followed in investigating the AFDB president? Yes. And every single member who, was, who is represented on that board is private to the final report. Did they sign off on it? Yes. Was it agreed? Did they, did they, did they give him a clean, clean bill of health? Yes. And then one member comes out, possibly because they are the second largest shareholder, 6.5%, all right, and decides that they, that they, they have issues with that report. And it doesn't follow the due process of the AFDP. I think that it behoves on the board to decide to either discard that and find a way to mend fences internally. And that is the way that I see it. Because if they decide to um, accommodate this accusation, this fresh accusation that does not in any way align to their due process, then it becomes, it creates a problem. It creates a problem for them as, as a board. It means that at the pandering of one, at the pandering of one country, irrespective of its strength, irrespective of its its influence, it means that at that at their pandering, they can um, they can obtain anything that has been, of course, met anything that has been signed off uh, properly. And that's my own view about it. Thank you. Now let me come to you, Mr. Faro Timi. That the matter of the tenor of the president of the African Development Bank also seems to have attracted his fair share of controversy. Why do you think controversy has caught at this process? Look, um, for a long time, for way too long, um, I'm not sure if you can hear me. I can hear you. Go ahead, please. Okay. For way too long, Africa has merely followed and done as it is told by the rest of the world. We've, we, we seem almost completely incapable of identifying what is in our own best interest. And more often than not, we're just constantly reactive. It is important that particularly in the new age in which we have found ourselves, where the world, which was supposedly a global village, has become ever more distant, and each person really needs to be looking out for his or her neighbor rather than the distant relative. And that is what I will call the foreigners right now. If we didn't know before, even though we do it to ourselves every day in our own country, there are several judge lawyers that dies every day in Nigeria, the poor girl that was murdered 
in Benin, the one that was killed in Ibadan, another one shot dead by Polizia in the world. We, 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 we need to begin to link all these things together and begin to understand that the time has come when we ourselves need to take another look at the way we govern ourselves, where we govern our continents, how we define what is in our own interest. Here is the thing. Every time it comes to the season for the election of the new president of the AFDP, you see all manner of interests playing up and becoming part of the consideration. Donald Trump has proven himself to be a rather malignant influence when it comes to race issues. And the current treatment of Akimumi Adeshino at the AFDB, particularly the fact that they have taken steps that do not appear to be in conformity with due process, would suggest to you that at the end of the day, it is not interest that it is not African interests that are being pursued right now. We should actually begin to ask questions that demand to have a clearer understanding of exactly what the strategic goals are that the Americans are pursuing. If the African shareholders for whom the bank was created and for whose development it was proposed have agreed among themselves that this person is acceptable to them, why should it be so important that Americans who have never proven themselves to be our friend, how can you be our friend if you can't even be the friend of your own citizens in your own country? How can they now be the ones that continually come to tell us what is in our own best interest? It is our own inability to properly identify what is in our own interest that has continued to leave us open to this sort of this sort of manipulation. Oh, if I was to, let, me, let, me, let me interject yes. there a little bit. Let me interject. Let me yes. Baloba, let's, let's consider um, the allegations of monopoly as regards the fact that Nigeria has the largest African shareholding in the bank. I mean, what do you make of that? Nigeria has historically been the highest shareholder with the least number of staff members among African countries. Indeed, Akim Omi Adeshino is the first Nigerian head of that bank. You can imagine if you are if you are the highest shareholder of a family business, and in that family business, you allow people who have far less shares than you to fill the leadership of that family business as we speak. The chairperson of the management board is actually the Minister of Planning of the Republic of Ivory Coast. And Ivory Coast barely has a third of Nigeria's shares. So it is easy in the backdrop of that, when the first Nigerian became the head of the bank and tries his best to fill the gap if not totally, but somewhat fill the yawning gap of this death, the shortage of Nigerian professionals in the bank, it is easy for people to accuse him of nepotism and corruption as they, as they have accused him. Now, here but you know what? Yeah, here to go. Mr. Bolo, I just hold it there. Here to go. Is there yes, a potential yes, for, for non-African nations to want to influence matters that concern Africa? And what, if anything, should be done to checkmate this? I think that um, um, it, it, the, the slant in which the United States is bringing this particular um, this particular query, this, this this call for another inquiry, it seems to give you that kind of feel that there is a, a penchant or there is a need for them to influence um, um, what comes out. I mean, because this is like three months to to his re-election, and as it is now, he is the only person that is up for re-election as president. No other person is contesting. Now, I think it is important for the Afri other African countries um, who are there to stand firm. If the due process has been followed, they should begin to see this body as a very critical organ that is, uh, that is assisting and in helping them to push for their growth and development. 
it is important at this point in time. So it is very, very possible that the U.S. is one way or the other trying to nudge, to nudge the leadership um, out of the hands of, uh, of Africa. But guess what? It's, it, doesn't, it doesn't sit well. It doesn't sit right because it is an African development body. And that's why the fact that, it, that, that there's a constituents of all other countries in there, there's nothing wrong if Africans lead the chase for their own growth and development. And I think that um, every other African country who is there, just as it's being shown now, should stand firm behind this. And that's, right. that's lastly, gentlemen, about. lastly, gentlemen, and here, Chukwu, I'm going to start with you. What might yes. Africa be needing to do now to ensure greater autonomy in the global economic space going forward? Here, Chukwu, in just 60 seconds, if you will. I think that um, we should begin to believe more in ourselves, begin to support ourselves even more. We have set several organs that have been built in um, for, for African development, like the AU, like the African Development uh, Bank. I think that African countries should band around these bodies, band around these bodies in helping them to expand their growth and development and should, of course, ignore any sort of incursions or any sort of um, restraints from um, foreign countries to try to stop this kind of growth. Because, I mean, Mr. Trust Bolaba, me, thank you, Echuku. Thank you very much, Echuku. Mr. Bolaba, what might Africa be needing to do now just to ensure greater autonomy in the global economic space going forward? Any civilization that does not develop its manpower to acquire the, re the requisite skills that that produces and sustains development can never be relevant in the committee of in the committee of nations to be honest with you africans can have 10 million afdbs african can have 10000 akumi additionals you know uh, gallivanting all over the continent speaking of how he's trying to domesticate opportunities in the continent, except that boy at Ojota bus stop, who runs after a downfall with a view to carry, to carry a produce being brought from, from the interland of the country. Except that boy is skilled up to be somebody working in construction, working in, agri in mechanized agriculture, working in, in, in the areas and sectors that sustain development, all of us are jokers. We will, be, we will be subjects of ridicule, not only on the continent, as it is now in the case of Akiwumi uh, Adeshino, for a bank that Shagari refused, that Africans should not take foreign, foreign powers to join in, uh, in its ownership. In 19... In 19... Uh, uh, so well, I should wrap up now, please. Yes. That, for me, is the fact that until we solve the problem of manpower development, we are joking. Mr. Farrell, to me, what are the imperatives for greater autonomy by Africa now in the global economic space going forward? There is a, there is a popular cliche. It says that when purpose is unknown, abuse becomes inevitable. The African has been abused for a long time. But before we were abused by foreigners, we were abused by our own leaders. As Mr. Agbola has just said, exactly what have we proposed our people to do? What leadership has been provided and where are we being led to? Until we resolve our own internal lack of direction and leadership, we remain prey to the entire world. Even those who ran out of Nigeria and ran off to America and UK and where have you, events everywhere else should be telling all of us, come back, repurpose our own continent, let's determine what our priorities and directions are, and stop the mindless chilling and develop our youth. Our strength is in our human resources. If we don't develop it, we continue to remain praised for those who have developed their own and merely see us as a place from where to come and extract value. Mr. Deli Fao to me, Boloba, and also Iechuku Ibeji, thank you very much for your contribution on this segment. We're going to quick break now, and when we return, lopsided appointments and a warning for the president. Stay with us.